couple of days ago, I finally released my remix of the Minecraft music disc, Pig Step, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made it. This is going to be an absolute journey. So this whole thing started off around five weeks ago when I was just trying to make a normal video where I just remix the entire song on camera, but it didn't actually work out because it sounded kind of garbage. I think you agree. Oh yeah. All this here took like 10 or so minutes to make, so I didn't have much of a problem just ditching the whole project and moving on to something else. But there's actually a positive as well, because in the process of putting together this garbage idea here, I actually managed to learn pig step on the guitar, which I'd gone to mess around with every couple of days. I'd just be trying out different chords and bass lines underneath the main melody. So the original idea that I had for the first project that I made went a little something like this. <laughs> when I was just randomly playing around with this progression here, instead of playing the F, I accidentally played in F sharp. And I actually really loved how it sounded. I think it just sounded really unexpected. So then I just took that idea there and worked on it for a couple of minutes and I came up with this progression right here. a little bit rough, but you get the idea. Now after I come up with that little progression there, I actually had a pretty strong idea of where I wanted to take the remix. So I went through and re-recorded in the entire intro section. So I got a whole lot of different layers of guitar. So we've got a low one here, and then we've got some higher octaves playing some doubles. So when you mix them all up, we get something really wide sounding. And then I've also done the same for this guitar track here. So I just got a nice little pluck going along, which is filled out with these recordings over here. I think they sound really nice together. And then of course I had to go through and bring in the flute playing the same chords as the original song. I really wanted this intro section to sound pretty close to the original and then for everything just to switch up when we hit that F sharp progression later on, which I had come in with a whole bunch of super powerful sounds. So we have some e tune saw waves over here. Ooh, the super heavy re-space sound over here, which just adds in a whole lot of grit and a bit of bass as well. And speaking of bass, we should also have a distorted bass line over here. And then we have what I would consider to be the most powerful sound of all of them, and that is this tape choir sound right here. Oh, it's so sharp. Spooky. But we'll get back to that later on. Now, all of this was originally topped off with a nice guitar lead sound, so it sounded a little something like this. Bends. I wasn't used to holding the guitar up there, but anyway, you get the idea. Now that I had the intro section, it was now time to move on to the drop section. So originally for the main drop, I decided to go for a drum and bass drop just because that suited the tempo that I was working with. So this was actually the very first version of the original drop that I made. gonna guess that I didn't like this drop here because I called the original file dumb with three B's but I still feel like I had potential. I like this Reese bass sound over here. It sounds really gritty. It looks a little bit complicated but that's really just a whole bunch of automation going through and changing up some EQs just to help give it a nice notch filter sound. If you want a more in-depth look into how these sounds are made I'd highly recommend the Cohen sound production tutorial, how we use samplers and effects tutorial over on their Patreon. I'll leave a link down to it in the description. That is pretty much exactly how I learned to make these sounds here. But anyway, from this original drop, I was a big fan of that re-space and I was also a big fan of this pitched up guitar sample that we've got over here. 
I just really like how it sits behind everything. I think it adds a little bit of tension throughout the whole thing. But overall, this does not sound good. But I like these two elements, so I took these over into a new project and I made another drop. And that goes a little something like this. even though that sounds a whole lot better than the previous version of the drop, it is actually pretty similar. I didn't have to change too much to get it to sound this way. Pretty much just took the same idea and expanded on it. So we've still got the same little guitar plucks. We've got some high octave ones as well, as well as this low octave one over here, which I actually think makes things sound a whole lot darker. So I took the original chord progression from the very first remix that I tried to make. So I've just taken that progression there and I've just made everything else follow it. So I've got this sine wave over here, adding in some sub bass, and then I also chopped up the respace and tweaked the automation to help it fit a little bit better. These are all still just kind of random. I really like how they work, especially those percussive hits. Really like those. And then another thing that I did with the respace is I brought in these notes at the very start, which follows the original bass line from the original Pig Step song. Pretty much just added that in because there's actually nothing in the drop that was from Pig Step itself. It sounded just like a completely original song, so I had to throw that in. It was actually a really good element to help build into the drop, so we've got some automation on reverb, making everything a bit wetter, and then everything just disappears when the kick drum comes in. I really like that. Let's just quickly get rid of that automation. Oh, it already sounds so much more boring. Yeah. Now towards the end of this section, we've got this nice little synth over here, which is just a serum patch. I think this was actually the only intentional sound that I made in this drop here, meaning that it was actually something I thought about beforehand rather than just clicking in random automation and seeing what sounds came out of it. I basically just had the idea to create something that sounded like something from the old PS1 demo disc that I used to play a whole lot back in the day. <laughs> I feel like that style of sound just really suited this classic style of DMB, which already sounded a little bit nostalgic for me. So anyway, this is just a really basic serum patch, which has a bit of automation on the filter, the attack and the decay. All this automation just helps give it that underwater bubbly vibe. Oh, I like that. I'm a big fan of that sound. And then on top of all this, I've just got this automation on this delay here to help things sound a little bit grainy. And then the final thing that I added in was just a couple more classic styled drum and bass drums. Hey, just a whole bunch of different samples. They've also got this little classic break over the top. So now that was a drop idea pretty much finished. Now the next step was to throw the project out. I actually really like the idea of this drop here, but I just feel like it didn't. I actually really like the idea of this drop, but I just feel like it didn't really suit the style of this intro that I had. I just feel like it didn't really work having this big epic intro which goes on for like a minute and 20 seconds to then lead into this drum and bass drop. I just wasn't a big fan. So I ditched that drop idea there and then a couple of days later I had come up with this drop. <laughs> So what we've got here is just a modified version of the original intro section. I really think having it lead in from this intro section here straight into the drop after such a short amount of time really helps back up the core idea that I had by throwing this completely unexpected chord over here. It just really shocks you the first time listening to it. It's just so unexpected. Now pretty much most of the production here is actually inspired by Polyphia's Look But Don't Touch. I just really like how that song has some ridiculously heavy sections which then instantly flip around into some more melodic, nice sounding sections. So I pretty much just wanted to do that but at a much faster pace. And also just the production in general for that song has inspired this song here with sound selection and stuff like that. So let's go through and see what makes up this drop. Now first up, the main thing that I wanted to bring over from the original intro section into this drop here and make pretty much the primary thing of the drop was this choir synth I've got right here. Which, by the way, was actually weirdly inspired by the Age of Mythology theme song. <laughs> anyway, I feel like making this the loudest, widest element of the drop actually just really helped add in that shock factor when going from this section over here into this section here. I think it's quite a haunting sound. Oh, 
so good. Now, to make this chord here even more impactful, I've actually split up the notes over two different channels. So we have one pan to the left, playing these notes over here. And then we've got one pan to the right, playing these notes here. And then also to go along with this choir synth here, I threw in something a little bit unexpected, and that is the screaming sample over here. <laughs> sounds stupid. But I actually think when you layer it in with a choir, it helps add in just a really, really out of tune note. You can just faintly hear it in the background. Now the next element that we have underneath this ridiculously wide chord is this stupidly down-tuned guitar. Which is just being completely destroyed with a whole bunch of different distortion effects. And this was actually something that was inspired by the stupidly low bass and guitar notes of Polyphia's Look But Don't Touch. I really just like the thickness that it adds and it also layers up really nicely with this 808 sound. Which itself is actually just a super simple operator patch. Just brought in some of the third harmonic, which I've then just layered up with this respace sound to give it a little bit of grit. Make things a bit rougher. I think it works. Even though it's not actually much, I do consider these to be the most important part of this drop. I think just having these couple of elements together really helps bring out the entire mood of the drop. But we do still have a whole lot of other things in here as well. So we've got this. Arpeggiated serum patch, I guess? I didn't even know that was in here. But anyway, that has just got some automation on the rate of the arpeggio, which looks like it is just triggering some chords. Ha! Didn't know it was there. Very, very interesting. So now we've just got some guitar plucks over here as well. Add a nice little bit of melodicness to the drop. I've also got a couple of different instruments playing some chords, which are just repurposed from the original intro. Got that one. We have got these detuned saw chords, which were brought over from the intro as well. By themselves, they actually sound really rough, but I think once you layer everything up, it really just all adds up. It helps things feel a whole lot thicker. So now, anyway, should we move on to the drums, which I actually kept really simple on purpose. Didn't really add in any hi-hats or anything like that because I didn't want things clashing with that ridiculous choir synth. That takes up quite a lot of room on the spectrum, so they're just quite simple. And there's nothing really too special with the sample selection as well. I just wanted stuff with really tight transients, stuff that hits super hard. Now I do actually mix it up a little bit for these next four bars over here where I do bring in some hi-hats just because that choir synth is no longer playing. So these four bars are pretty much just using the exact same elements as the first four bars over here. Everything's just toned down a whole lot more. So we get rid of all the distorted synths. We bring in some softer synths as well. And in general, everything is just being filtered a little bit. So we've got the choir synth with a filter and a little bit of choppiness with this auto pan. We've also just got this little filtered serum pluck layered underneath it. So yeah, now that everything is filtered out a little bit, that gives me a chance to bring in some different hi-hats and stuff like that. I'm also able to bring in this higher pluck sound, which opens up slowly over time. So if we look at the automation, we have some automation on the release of the sound over time. And we've also got something interesting going on with the panning, where I've got the notes split over two different stereo channels, which expand apart over time. And I think comboing that up with the release automation just really helps open things up towards the end of the progression. Wait, I just realized that my audio records in mono, so you won't be able to hear that in the video. You're just gonna have to trust me with that one. It sounds really good. <laughs> anyway, at the end of the synth opening up, we have this little transition section, which is just a whole bunch of differently pitched 808 snares, which actually just has the serum effects with dimension expander on it, which automates over time to widen up as the snares go along. And then these are layered up with these pot hit sounds over here. <laughs> now these just have the exact same processing treatment on as well, just to make things super wide, which when combined, I think just add up to a really interesting transition sound. Now there was actually one final thing which I add to this drop, which would then go on to completely change the direction of the next section of this entire song and pretty much the entire feel of the song overall. So originally this song would have the intro section and we'd go into 16 bars of a drop. And then the next section that would play would be 16 bars of the drop with the main guitar melody on top. And they would just pretty much repeat two times and then the song would End. And it was actually this way right up until a couple of hours before I was originally going to release the song, but I just kind of hated it. It really just sounded like it was trying too hard to be epic or 
deep or something like that. So I thought I'd push the release of the song back a day and do a complete 180 and make something that was completely different to the previous section. Now, I didn't actually really have any ideas for this section until I was listening through the song and thought there was a certain section in the choir synth that sounded like the new Super Mario Bros. But sound. So then I thought, why not add in the new Super Mario Bros. <laughs> Bar sound. It's really weird how just one sound can completely change the tone of a song. It just switched it from being something super serious and epic to something a little bit dumb, but a little bit fun. So then that inspired me to make the entire next section of the song just be something fun and stupid. And that is how I came up with this section here. <laughs> I love that. It's so cool. Now, believe it or not, the main inspiration for this entire section here was actually the cutscene music from this little game right here, Dragon Quest Heroes Rocket Slime. So I think the main element for this section here is actually the bass and the bass melody that plays. So we have a modified version of the 808 from the drop section. It's a little bit shorter and a little bit less distorted. And I've got an even shorter version here, which has a harsher pitch envelope to make it a little bit stabby. And then the second layer of bass that we have is actually this old slap bass sound font, which is over here. I've actually used this sound a couple of times before. I used it for my Seinfeld remix, which actually inspired the lead into the section with that good old bend note. Anyway, these two basses followed this bass line here, which I actually recorded on a distorted bass tone. Yeah. I basically just wanted the bass line notes to fill in when the guitar melody wasn't playing. So whenever there's a long held note in the guitar solo melody thing, wherever that is, this is a very messy project. So for example, over here, we've got a long held note. Bass line kicks in to fill it in a little bit. Well, that actually changes a little bit towards the end of the bass line where it actually switches to start complementing the guitar. I think this really helps tie everything together. Now on top of the 808 sound and the slap bass, we have these filtered chords somewhere. So this one? Yeah, that's it. Good old filter. And then towards the end, it should open up a bit. Yeah, so that's just done by automating the reverb as well as the cutoff point for the filter. Just try to bring everything up and then instantly drop it back down. I mean, there isn't actually too much apart from those main elements there. We've got a couple of different layers backing up the bass line. So we have some note block sounds. We have the xylophone sound. And we also have the iron xylophone sound. And we just got one on the left, one on the right to give it a bit of stereo. And the timing of those is also offset a tiny bit just so it doesn't clash with the higher bass notes. It plays a little bit after. And over here we have one of my favorite sounds which I added into this song, which is the Animal Crossing New Horizons stung by bee. Oh yeah. So I just took a little sample out of that, turned it into a synthesizer, and that just plays the same thing as the bass line, as well as the Minecraft note block sounds. I love that sound so much. I think I actually laid it up with the slap bass intro sound as well. So they bend up together. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. We've also got another sample from the stung by bees sound. Just the percussion hit, and we've laid that up with the classic bonk sound effect. And I guess one of the final things that we have over here is actually a sample from the original song, which inspired it, the one from Rocket Slime. And that is just these little vocal hits right here. So they just sit on top, a little bit of echo on it. And yeah, that is all just topped off with some very simple drums, which are pretty much just copied over from the original drop. I've just swapped out a couple of samples to get some more filtered sounds like the snare and stuff like that. Pretty much just so I could make some room in the mix down for this lead guitar solo section over here which is actually just stitched together by me playing pretty much every single note individually, just because I actually wanted to make sure that I nailed these long bend notes. Wanted to make sure the pitch is perfect. I actually quite like the artificial sound as well. And then at the end of this guitar solo, we got a really cool effect going on where I automated the delay so it completely changes the pitch of the guitar delay towards the end. Oh, that sounds cool. 
<laughs> I love that. And at the time that I finished this section here, there was actually pretty much the entire song would just play this very short intro section, then have the drop section, then this nice little melodic, funky section, and then it would just kind of repeat and then finish. That was about it. I think it was actually a little under two minutes, which I just thought was a little bit too short. So I decided to go back and bring in that original drum and bass drop, which I made. And I think this was only like 12 or so hours before I was going to upload this song. And I hadn't actually worked on this for like a week or so since I showed off the last little version. So I knew there was still a whole bunch of touching up to do, but I think the most important thing that I had to take care of was trying to make it transition from the other drop section into this one, just because they're two completely different projects. I had to work a little bit just to help fuse everything together. So I brought in a whole lot of different ambient sounds. So I've actually got a couple of different Minecraft ambient sounds. We've got some from the Crimson Forest, Soul Sand Valley, some little clicks over here as well. Got a nice little lava popping sample over here. And then I've got these two clips over here. This one was actually just a clip from this part here and I just threw a spectral blur onto it. And I just hit freeze. And you just get a held note which goes on forever. But yeah, I use that technique to make this little sound over here. And I've also got this other one over here which is actually the same technique but it's used with a gassed sound which I think it just sounds really cool. You can actually tell it's a gassed as well just by the tone of it. And then on top of all this we still have all the other stuff fading in. So we've got the guitar plucks. We've got these nice glitchy sounds over here. We've got a guitar fading in. And then we just go back to the old one. Now I didn't actually have too much time to do anything else to this drop just because I was just really running out of time. I wanted to upload this song. So all I could really do was add in a couple different layers just to help complement all the other sounds that were already there. So we got these string sounds over here. We got this serum patch over here. That's kind of ugly. At least you can't really notice it once the actual song's playing. And pretty much the final thing I added in was just a whole bunch of extra drum sounds. So now the drums are a lot more full. There's a lot more going on rather than just being a breakbeat loop or something like that. My favorite part is there's a butter sizzling sample. <laughs> pretty much works as a hi-hat. You can actually hear it if you know it's there. I just realized how many different snare drum sounds there are here. Got that one. Got a tail. Got a little woodblock sound, tambourine. Noise. And just another snare in general. And we have some foley sounds. And that all makes a pretty decent snare drum. Anyway. I think that's pretty much it for the drum and bass section. Now, there's actually a couple of different things which I would have liked to have tweaked with this mix down, but when I was trying to change stuff around, I kept getting rendering bugs and stuff like that. There's a whole lot of stuff going wrong, especially with automation. So I kind of just had to go with an older version. I couldn't really change anything else. But yeah, anyway, that is how I made my pig step remix. Now, after I'd finished the song, I still had to go through and make a music video, which is actually a really time consuming project. Just because it was actually a real Minecraft world, not a render or anything like that. I still had to go through and set up the entire scene, which I only had a couple of hours to do, but I still actually really love the way it turned out. I had to do some really stupid techniques to get things to look the way they were, like throwing random light sources behind trees and stuff like that, or even just really simple stuff like putting up unnaturally long vines just so that appear in the shot. And if anyone is wondering, these shaders I used for the music video section were the BSL shaders. I tried a whole bunch of different ones, but these were the only ones that gave me the right atmosphere, like the amount of fog I was able to pump in to make everything look so much thicker. It just looks really nice. But yeah, anyway, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video here. I gotta say, I actually really enjoyed doing this backwards. By that, I mean just sitting down, making the whole song off camera and then coming on and showing how I made it afterwards. I feel like it actually allowed me to be more creative without having to worry about storage space or recording or anything like that, which probably actually means I'll do more like this in the future. But yeah, anyway, I think that's actually going to wrap it up for this video. So I'll see all of you in the next couple of days on my next upload. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.